Thank you to Planet Wild for sponsoring today's episode of Bizarre Beasts. Planet Wild is a community-financed environmental protection organization letting you protect nature from the comfort of your own home. Stay around to the end of this video to learn about their solutions to our world's most pressing environmental issues. Good morning, John. Welcome back to Bizarre Beasts Season Zero. Hank and I are trading off hosting duties on our year-long journey to remaster the original Bizarre Beast episodes from Vlogbrothers with corrections, updates, and new facts. Make sure you stick around for the pin set announcement and for bonus material about this video's Bizarre Beast. So owls are pretty cool, right? The big eyes, the silent flight, the ears. Ears! But also, everybody knows that owls are cool. What about frog mouths? You probably haven't even heard of them. And they're like owls, except not at all. Despite the big front-facing eyes and the nocturnal habits, frogmouths are actually more closely related to hummingbirds than to owls. Just wanted to pause here and add a little more context, because that can't be true, right? Except it is. Frogmouths and hummingbirds, and one of our previous beasts, the oil bird, all belong to a superorder of birds called the Strysores. And while they may look very different, the similarities in their DNA tells us that they are all more closely related to each other than they are to owls. Those eyes are really what does it for us, right? Because we humans are so eyeball focused as a community based species, we see those eyes as like a sign of intelligence or emotion. And I'm not saying they're not smart birds are smart, but ravens are smarter. If ravens had eyes like owls, we would let them teach kindergarten. But then you mix those eyes with this big ridiculous mouth and you get something that doesn't really appear wise so much as alternately high, startled, sleepy, cranky, shocked, and adorably furious. Frogmouths are night hunters, just like owls, hence the convergent evolution on big front-facing eyes. But they mostly eat bugs, though they will eat a mammal that happens close enough by, uh, they have a hard time killing them, so they'll just whack them on rocks until they die. But they mostly eat bugs, so instead of big powerful legs, they have a big, gigantic mouth. The bigger that mouth got, the higher the odds of a successful catch. So the mouths just kept getting bigger. They're so big! And if you spend enough time looking at frog mouths, you'll notice something that also checks the box of like the human evolutionary cute brain. Their heads appear to be like as big as the whole rest of their body. And that is nearly the case. Okay, it's not quite the case. Their skulls are more like one third the size of the rest of their skeletons, which is still a pretty big old noggin. It's all their fluff that makes it appear even bigger. Then if you go to the next level of like cute brain check marks, turn it into a baby, and it becomes suddenly clear that like Furbies are infringing on the Frogmouth trademark. Ugh. Yeah, oh, my heart. I just want to squish it. Frogmouths, however, are terrible parents, possibly because they have such tiny useless legs and also their beaks are so specialized. They're just very bad at nest building. They often lose eggs or chicks to the perils of that surprise gravity. But they will take advantage of the nests of more careful nest builders or human objects that look like good nests. So that's even cuter, what the heck? But then wait, before I go, sometimes they are not cute because they can shapeshift. Frogmouths sleep during the day and they're pretty small, so they have to be wary of predators. And they have in their toolkit a number of ways to deal with this. The first is that they can just look like logs. They even will sometimes sway in the wind like they are a piece of the tree. But when threatened, they can also change shapes to like scary looking things or just weird looking. Like, I don't know what to do with this. And the tawny frogmouth of Australia has like a plan C and D. Plan C is just to peck at the enemy, and D is to spray poop all over it. They also have a plan E, which is to open their mouths really, really wide. And the inside of their mouths is like green or yellow, which makes their beaks appear even bigger and more threatening. Hooray for the tawny frog mouth, you shape-shifting, cryptically disguised, poop-spraying, bug-catching, nest-neglecting, grown-up bird Furby, I love you. If you missed this critter the first time around, our Season Zero pin set is now available. This set includes all 12 of the animals that we began this Bizarre Beast journey with on Vlogbrothers, including this great tawny frogmouth pin that really glows in the dark. To get the Season Zero pin set, visit BizarreBeastShow.com. 
I'm not sure whether this is surprising or not, but one study from 2021 found that the frogmouth is the most Instagrammable bird, according to a method that normalizes the number of likes an image receives by its time since upload and its reach. This produces an image aesthetic appeal score, and the study compared these scores for a bunch of different bird species. The frogmouth beat out much more colorful and, well, pretty birds like the Taraco and the Hoopo, presumably based on sheer goofiness alone. Another thing about frogmouths is that there are 13 species of them, and they're found on both sides of the invisible boundary that runs through the islands of Indonesia, known as Wallace's Line. The line is what's called a biogeographic boundary. Basically, it's a region of deep water that keeps the animals of Asia separate from those of Australia, formed ultimately because of plate tectonics. And many birds won't even cross the line, despite being able to, you know, fly. But the ancient ancestors of frogmouths did, sometime between 44 and 27 million years ago. Based on where the oldest frogmouth fossils have been found, they probably dispersed from Asia to Australia, potentially by hopping from island to island in the Southwest Pacific. This episode was sponsored by Planet Wild, an online community of nature lovers that helps our planet bounce back from ocean pollution, deforestation, and species extinction. Their online community is funded the restoration of ecosystems around the world to preserve our nature and wildlife through a monthly membership starting at $6. Every month, Planet Wild selects a new environmental partner project to work with, and they document their work with video reports that you can find right here on YouTube. That way, everyone can see what the community's contribution has been used for and what the collective impact has been. The videos on their YouTube channel are educational, with a focus on innovative real-world environmental action. In their upcoming mission, they're headed to Scotland to save forests in a way that might surprise you. They'll be chopping down trees. Why? Check out their video linked here to find out. If you're looking for solutions to environmental problems, then Planet Wild is for you. Thanks for watching and thank you for supporting Bizarre Beasts.